So you mentioned before that like real life court doesn't look like it does on TV, but like where in your experience, how do you see people coming in and like having misconceptions? Like, can you point to some things that are really different between real life, (laughs) real life court and uh, TV court? I think like Evan hit the nail on the head for one thing. It's that TV kind of gives you the expectation that trials are over and done with within a couple of months of something happening, right? So something happens on Law and Order and Olivia Benson arrives and investigates a heinous crime. And then with, you know, in two months, they're at trial trying to determine whether or not this guy's guilty, which I don't know a whole ton about the criminal context, but I know definitely speaking to my criminal law friends, that's definitely not true. You know, it can sometimes be a year or two or sometimes three before the person actually gets their trial day. Mm. Um, so I think, you know, if you kind of extrapolate that into our context as um, family lawyers, there's often clients who think that you can just get into court in the next day or two, right? So um, just file your documents and get there and you get your day in court in front of the judge. But that's generally not how things work, mm-hmm. particularly in light of all these new mechanisms that the courthouse has set up um, in response to COVID-19. And then we've got... Um, I think the other big misconception is that, you know, TV is based on American courts and we're in Canada here where we're based on a system of um, having, I think, wearing the robes for one thing, not being able to stand up and make a big soliloquy and walk in front of the jury box (laughs) and stand up and do whatever we want. So the court itself just looks a lot different because we're standing at a podium for hours on end, sometimes making our our submissions. So Mm. that's another big difference can I tell you the one thing that bugs me (laughs) no go ahead Kim and then we'll talk about the one thing that bugs me I'll make a note of that Joanna we'll come back to it (laughs) I didn't know you guys couldn't didn't go go up and give your opening remarks and your closing remarks I didn't I didn't know that that you can't do that in Canada you guys you guys are are pinned to the ground in your little box pretty much (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you're, you're pretty, I guess it depends on your venue, right? But you're li- pretty limited in time. You're limited by, yeah, by procedure. Like, you don't just sort of, like, show up at a trial. And <laughs> well, I mean, I think part of it, too, is uh, everything's recorded. And so the microphones they use are, you know, darn, they're not, they don't, I don't think they're really designed to pick up the entire room. So you stay at the podium because that's where the mic is. I think that's like practically speaking the reason why I think I think theoretically I you probably could walk pace in front of the jury if you wanted maybe yeah yeah, yeah. it would know. probably would be weird <laughs> would be weird yeah if you had a jury <laughs> yeah that's another thing if you had a jury yeah. <laughs> but I also think there's kind of that invisible barrier between you as counsel and the judge that you're really not supposed to cross without permission right so mm. but yeah you're well, supposed right to TV, in tv that you know, they're always saying like permission to approach the bench right do you, do you say yeah. that Joanna? never once in my life and have the judge cover the microphone so nobody yeah. can hear them never happened has no. it happened to you heather no no or they're always meeting in judges chambers too they're always going to the back room have you noticed that i've never I've never done yeah. that. Yeah, our Either. judges' chambers are public. Right. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. It would be effective. Mm-hmm. Can, I, can we meet in your in chambers, Your Honor? Uh, that's where we are. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. There's no side conversations going on. <laughs> no, it's true. That's but. amazing. I thought you guys would be able to caucus in some capacity with the judge about some, you know a sensitive topic no you can't do that okay no the only thing i can think of it would be like pre-trial stuff right where you might have a judge who's helping you with process and saying like this is what you're going to do next and you're having meetings with them but they're not they're never the person that's hearing the case then and deciding it um so yeah that's i've never even really thought about that but that's another big difference isn't it yeah, that you've never actually been called into get into my chambers and we'll talk about this. Yeah. Because most you, of those discussions would be on the record and recorded. <laughs> so. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Hmm. 
So what really bugs you, Joanna? Yeah, what really bugs me? It always really bugs me when um, you get the glimpse into the lawyer's office, like on suits, and there's no files on their desk, and all they're working on is a 12-inch mat book, you know? <laughs> like, that's their computer. <laughs> and then when they do high, hand them a file folder, it's like, you know, just the letter size file folder with one sheet of paper in it. Right. When in reality, it's like, you know, you're kind of making a fort out of all the files on your desk. And some of them are like three file folders big. And the more screens you have as a lawyer, like the more glamorous you kind of are. Like if you've got four screens set up, like you're really you made it. Wow. You made it yeah. as a lawyer. Yeah. Like, I don't know any lawyer who exclusively works off of a 12 inch MacBook. 